Texas Governor Greg Abbott has signed some legislation that will allow government workers to discriminate against LGBT youth simply because they are gay or transgender. It would also allow these government officials to discriminate against children if their parents happen to be gay. On same sex unions. In a documentary, the Pope endorsed civil unions for same sex couples, saying, quote, Homosexual people have the right to be in a family. Religion's been used as a justification to uh, invalidate us as human beings, invalidate our love. Okay, so can you explain a little bit about yourself? Yes, yes, Miss Evelyn. Well, my name first off is Dayon Boulanger Chapman, and I am the head choir director here at Lakeview Centennial and the department chair for VAPA, for our visual and performing arts. Um, I've been here for six years now. This is my sixth year at Lakeview. And um, before, before being here at Lakeview, I worked for three years at Prosper High School, where I was the associate choir director and the head choir director at Reynolds Middle School, concurrently. And now I'm here. Hello, my name is Mr. Jeremy Boulanger Chapman, and I teach English at Lakeview. On Thursday, October 19, 2020, the Texas State Board of Social Workers voted unanimously to change a section on the Code of Conduct. The change removes protections for LGBTQ+, the disabled, and people of non-Christian faith. Today we ask teachers at our school who are members and supporters of the LGBTQ community what they think of this change. I find it not only hypocritical, but I find it puzzling. I find it puzzling that as a community leader, um, Mr. Greg Abbott would make a decision that so blatantly um, exposes this hypocrisy and contradiction in um, his service. I think being a leader, a leader in our community means that you're, you're a servant to the people. And I don't know that by posing this legislation that, that um, prohibits folks who are disabled, I don't see how that serves our community. And so um, I see it as highly contradictory and highly hypocritical, but I also again see it as a huge disappointment because while this is a, a piece of paper or legislation that, that has just words, there are people whose lives are truly affected every single day that, that that paper has any weight on it. And I think that is truly a tragedy, beyond being hypocritical. The hypocritical part puts that on, on Greg Abbott, which sure, but I don't think he deserves that much attention. I think his decisions deserve more attention, and I think we should be pointing the finger at if he's making the right choices or not. Interestingly enough, I actually had this conversation today. Um, I find it like 100% hypocritical because the laws that he's actually trying to implement are going to impact people who are just like him. So I feel like because of his privilege or because he doesn't have to worry about the same thing that everybody else will have to worry about, the law that he's trying to pass is not going to affect him the same way that it will affect everyone else. But at the same time, that makes it even worse that he was be. I guess harming his. I believe what I read was that uh, Thomas and Alito were not necessarily going to work to like reverse it, but we're kind of saying like, hey, you know what? We passed this law for gay marriage and stuff, but maybe that we we shouldn't have just because like, what if like someone else is going to feel like their religious freedom is being violated because they have to follow these laws? And I think there was actually like the case involved a clerk who didn't want to issue marriage licenses and things like that. So um, you know, it like I feel like marriage equality is kind of the minimum and there's still like, you know, there's no state protections for like, you know, you could get potentially fired for being gay if there weren't like a federal level protection that was just passed recently. Um, so there's like a lot more work to be done. And the fact that they're like, oh, you know what, but what about religious freedom? It's like, you know, like if I wanted to go get married, like with someone of the same sex, that's not gonna stop someone else from like going to church and doing their thing. But like, if it's like your job is 
to serve the community a certain way, like through a government organization that like issues marriage licenses, you know, that's that's different. Like you can step away from that role and still have your religion. That's not an abridgment. You must have a lot of privilege if you can discriminate against people who have the same disabilities you do. Um, I, 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 I think, yeah, I mean, it's gotta be hypocritical. If uh, you're in a wheelchair and you're passing uh, legislation that will enable someone else to discriminate against other people who are in a wheelchair, who may not have the financial uh, opportunities or advantages that you have, um, yeah, I think that would highly speak hypocritical. How do you feel about the new law being passed that allows social workers to reject clients for being LGBTQ plus or having a disability? <sighs> well, um, when you ask how do I feel about it, um, the, the feeling hasn't changed. Uh, this law, while this law might feel or look new, the discrimination that this law upholds, that this law um, carries, is not new. Um, people like me and members in my community have felt this discrimination since forever. And so um, I still feel saddened by the, by the fact that something like this, this mandate still exists and that new ones like this mandate are being created. Um, I think it, it speaks not necessarily to just discrimination, but it speaks to a disconnect between two communities um, they don't understand one another, and as opposed to coming to the table and finding a meeting ground, we found a way to make a boundary, and I just, I think that's a sad, sad reality. It was disappointing to see the governor advocating to change the rules to make it to where uh, a social worker can decide not to serve someone who is LGBTQ or disabled. And I read that it was because, like, it doesn't match the other rules in Texas or something like that, which is, it sounds like such a weak excuse, and you know, if we were going to exclude people from the rules in Texas and that's why we're trying to change the rules for social workers, then why not expand, like, who's protected in, like, general Texas law and stuff? Um, I was happy to see that they actually reversed that decision a couple of weeks afterwards <laughs> because yeah. there was so much national pressure. It's like, what are you guys doing? This is a step backwards. Yeah. But, you know, like, I think everyone should be able to access, like, these basic, like, important services and especially, like, if you are in a group that is othered so much. I don't like it. I, I disagree with it because I feel like it's unfair. Um, first off, when speaking of the disabilities, like people are not in control of their disability, so it's unfair to actually, I guess, not treat them as equal. I mean, it's equal to, to anyone else because of the simple fact that, of something that they can't control. And it goes the same um, for the LGBTQ plus community. All, any law that is actually, I guess, meant to hinder or harm someone just because of a difference that they have other, as opposed to other people, I don't think that any law like that should exist in this country. Do you believe since this bill was passed that there is a possibility that other bills like this could be passed as well and that they can affect other marginalized groups? I think, you know, it's, it's not that hard to find examples of other laws that have either passed or been, like, people have tried to pass about you know, what LGBTQ folks can and can't access, whether it's like, you know, can a baker refuse to, like, make a cake for a gay wedding, or, you know, can a, a group that works with adoptions, you know, say, oh, sorry, like, straight couples only or whatever. So, like, um, it's gonna, it, it's already been proposed in other places, and sometimes, like, things come up and they get shot down, but the fact that they're being proposed at all is worrying to me. So, like, yeah, this isn't the first or the last time someone's gonna, like, work to exclude LGBTQ folks. Um, yes, the fact that this bill was passed anyway is already detrimental to the country. Um, the fact that it actually was allowed to be passed is indicative of the society that we live in now because of the simple fact, if you create a law and people agree with that law, then that's one thing, but the laws that are being created are actually meant to hurt other people. So there are people in this community or in the world or in the society or in the country who are okay with those marginalized communities or populations being ostracized just because of their differences. And I don't agree with that. That's a good question. I think um, the answer to both parts of that is yes. I think that um, in any instance, uh, birds of a feather flock together. And the folks who put this bill together aren't the only ones who feel this way. And um, I'm sure this isn't the only idea that they have that's suppressive or, um, or um, exclusive tool that comes out of this is that because there has been legislation, it's going to be brought to all of our attentions. And because of that, on the flip side, those of us that this matters to, we now have concrete um, 
legislation and not just concrete legislation but concrete um, experiences that this legislation will give to those people those other people being discriminated to fight and I think that's so important that even though this got passed it's not the end we live in a democracy and when we have bad laws we can undo them yeah, I think you have to be really careful. Uh, I think you have to be really careful when you start limiting freedoms, right? Um, um, when you start limiting the freedoms of, of groups of people, how long is it going to take before they start limiting your group's freedom? You know what I'm saying? Um, and so uh, you look at look at Nazi Germany. I mean, look at how that all came about. Um, that is uh, it's a prime example of, of people who are limiting other people's freedoms because they don't align with what they agree to be normal um, and whenever you create a norm you automatically create an ad norm and that that needs to be very careful here in America because we we, we found ourselves on being you know the richest freest uh, country in the world and we need to you know we need to protect everyone's right to uh, ideas everyone's right to life everyone's right to live how do you feel about Clarence Thomas and Samuel Alito trying to reverse the law that allows gay marriage in America because it violates religious freedom? Um, I'm newly married. Um, I actually um, just got married, well not just got married, I got married two years ago in December to the love of my life and my best friend. Um, and that wouldn't have been possible without the, the, the current laws that we have. Um, while I've just been married just shy of two years, we've been together for 15. And I, um, it's always a funny icebreaker when I talk to other people and tell them and they think, oh, what took you so long to get married? And it's like, it literally wasn't a right. I didn't have that right. And I think that always seems to kind of shock people or put them aback to think, oh, wait, wow, yeah, that is new. That is something that just happened. And to see the genuine shock in their face shows me that it's not about the love. It's just about an ideal, about this ideal of family that comes from, albeit a great source. I don't want to say that the Christian Bible is a bad thing. I do want to say, though, that the Christian Bible doesn't represent everyone. And by the great founding fathers' idealisms, we were free from any specific religious text or, or doctrine. And I think that those awesome people who are so strong in their faith and who um, so, so much want to share that with everyone else, I think they, they miss the point by um, trying to take away other people's rights for love under that same name. Um, I believe what I read was that uh, Thomas and Alito were not necessarily going to work to like reverse it, but we're kind of saying like, hey, you know what? We passed this law for gay marriage and stuff, but maybe that we, we shouldn't have just because like what if like someone else is going to feel like their religious freedom is being violated because they have to follow these laws. And I think there was actually like the case involved a clerk who didn't want to issue marriage licenses and things like just because your religion says like, oh, X, Y, Z shouldn't be the case doesn't mean that everyone else has to abide by that. If your church does not want to have gay marriage, then your church shouldn't have gay marriage. My church, my God, wants to recognize the unions between people. Well, my church should be allowed to do this. Do you think the acceptance of Judge Amy Coney Barrett will greatly affect the LGBTQIA plus community and other marginalized groups? <sighs> um, I do, but I, I, I want it, I want to hope that it won't. But I do feel like it will just because of the simple fact that we, everybody who actually has followed, I guess, her confirmation hearing or anyone who actually follows her ju judicial presidings um, understands or should know that she actually has spoken out against things that she actually disagrees with based on her religion, which will not make her as objective as she possibly can be when on the court. So I do think people should be kind of worried. I um, I can confess that I don't know Miss Amy Coney Barrett personally, but from the readings I've seen on articles, um, the short things in this quick time of her appointment, 
Um, I, I do, I have gathered that she seems to be more of a traditionalist, meaning that when a doctrine is created, she thinks that that doctrine is more so pretty good how it is and that we should stick to that doctrine. As opposed to where I am a more of a living document person where I think when we, when we make a doctrine, that's the first draft and that as people change and as life and time changes, that document should change also. Um, and I think because um, Judge Amy Coney Barrett is not of that thinking, I think that there, therein lies some, um, some harm in that um, as our country grows and um, as our society grows and changes from one generation to the next and as she is still our justice, I fear that um, her, idealist, um, her ideals of sticking to tradition will hinder greatly um, our ideas of, pro of progress. And so in that instance, yes, I am afraid. However, I do, I do believe in, in, at this point in my life, I've been able to see a couple justices be appointed. And I have noticed that when a justice is appointed, there seems to be this washing over them that they, they, they do serve the law. They aren't there for themselves. They do seem to step up and serve for the American people. And so in that instance, I'm truly hopeful that this appointment to the highest court in our lands will truly inspire Miss Amy Coney Barrett to serve us and to serve us for the law. So I'm not, I don't know a whole lot about her previous record, but I do know that I saw a lot of fear about her being, you know, such a conservative judge and everything. And I think that my concern is just more with the Supreme Court as a whole. Like the fact that we've had so many uh, judges appointed during this administration alone. And, you know, ideally the Supreme Court, like, it wouldn't matter, like, what party each person is. Like, they would just work to be like, oh, the Constitution says this. But then, like, you know, the parties do vary in, like, what they consider constitutional, not constitutional, and all of that. So I am worried, you know, with her appointment, that kind of solidifies a pretty conservative majority on the Supreme Court, which I think for right now, like, um, kind of messes up the balance and everything we have going. And, you know, like, there's, they're upholding the Constitution as their law, but as their rule, is like their their role, but it's kind of hard to do that without your own bias. So I worry that a lot of them kind of have the same kind of bias and might rule against LGBTQ folks in the future. Um, well, yeah, I mean, it's um, the sad thing about our, everybody has an agenda, man. Everybody's serving an agenda. Uh, the, the sad thing for me about our government is that we have too many Democrats and we have too many damn Republicans. <laughs> We don't have enough Americans. We need American politicians. I'm, I'm sick of seeing Democrat, Republican politicians. I'm, I'm tired of bought and sold people. Um, give me somebody who wants to do something for America. Um, and I think this judge that's just been appointed, number one, um, she's been a, a law professor for a number of years. I can't can't dis dispute how hard it is to become a professor. I, I, I can't dispute how, how much education it takes to become a law professor. Uh, getting a Juris Doctorate is, is not easy. So you know, kudos to her. Um, but she's never tried a case in the court of law. She's never been a prosecuting attorney. She's never been a defending attorney. Um, she's been a law professor. She's been a judge for a very short period of time. I think there were other people who were more highly qualified uh, to be a judge at that, at that time in our, in our country. Um, I, I appreciate that she's a woman. There are conservative people of color in this country. Um, how come there's never been an openly gay judge on the Supreme Court? That, that would be a good person to put there. To think that we took uh, the most liberal activist uh, judge for women's rights and replaced her with who we replaced her with is incredibly scary. The Supreme Court, out of everything else in our country, has to be without the bias of party, po uh, party politics. Has to. It has to be the voice of the people, the voice of the Constitution. It has to be without debt. You can't have a Supreme Court justice that is in debt to the people that put them there. That Supreme Court justice serves until the end of their life. They have to be accountable to the people in the United States. They can't be accountable to big business. They can't be accountable to you know uh, one party or another. They have to be accountable to the Constitution and the people of America. I hope, I hope that this woman would um, would be able to rise to that. Right? I hope that she would be able to rise to that. And time's going to tell. You know, time's going to tell. We're going to know. We're going to know sooner than ra rather than later. As you know, in the recent interview with Pope Francis, he openly supported members of the LGBTQIA community. Do you feel like this might affect the way religion see people in the LGBTQ community? Sadly, no. I don't. 
I don't. And the reason I say this is because while he did come out and give some great words in favor um, towards our community, they weren't strong enough. They, 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 they hinted at substitutions and almost equality. Um, and to me, that's not good enough. Also, um, I don't think so because I feel that people who have, who have made the decision that um, the homo homosexual lifestyle is against their, their religion or LGBTQ plus anything is against anything that they believe in relig religiously, I don't think the Pope saying kind words will sway them. Um, we didn't get here by one person making a small speech. Um, we got here by many years and generations of ill teaching and, and not communicating and connecting with, with the people in our community. And I think until we start doing that consistently, the way we did before when we taught hate, it won't make a difference. Great answer. Thank, Thank you. you. It's, I think it's kind of a weird example to cite, but you know, even earlier when he was first confirmed as Pope or whatever the term is, um, he had said like, hey, instead of maybe focusing on like, you know, othering LGBTQ folks, maybe we should focus more on like serving the poor and like other core tenets of our religion. Uh, the more recent thing you were saying, I think is he had vo been vocally supportive for civil unions or at least said like, hey, this should be allowed, which is not the same as like gay marriage, but at least it's like, hey, like, people should, like, through the state, have a right to, like, the same kind of, like, you know, license or whatever this is, or whatever that grants. And I think I'm just, I was kind of, like, I saw that, I was like, wait, really? He said that? You know, like, that was kind of, like, a weird surprise for me, like, growing up Catholic and everything, and not, that not being the case. So, I know he's gotten flack for that, but I, want, I do wonder and hope that maybe that would say, change some minds, or at least make people more open to, like, oh, like, let me not point fingers and, like, focus on something else, you know? Um, I do, especially um, for those people in the Roman um, Catholic religion. Um, the one thing that he, well, he, he actually did talk about civil unions, I think that's what he called it. Um, I don't see, I see it actually being a very, a very good step in the right direction, but at the same time, I don't understand why it would have to be a civil union as opposed to a marriage or a wedding. Yeah, I mean, I, I was shocked. I was shocked when the, the Pope makes these statements, right? But it, it shows you where the Pope's at. He's, he's being progressive. He's seeing how the world is. Um, you can find homosexuality in every species of animal on the face of the earth. There are flying squirrels that have same-sex relationships. Uh, I, I got that off the Discovery Channel. Uh, so, you know, uh, and I really did. It was a documentary. Uh, and that's the truth. But we, we need to we need to celebrate ideas of love. Well, you don't celebrate that enough, and that, that needs to be that needs to be celebrated. It would be nice to see churches do charitable works and to get more into the community and, and to get more invested in people and, and to get invested in all people. Um, there are gay people in every aspect of society. There are gay people in uh, every high school in America. There are gay people in every neighborhood in America. Um, you know, it's it's um, people are people. Uh, and we just we need to live in a world where we can be accepting of of everyone for who they are um some of my i, I owe every awesome thing in my life to gay men two gay men that introduced me to my ex-wife two gay men introduced me to my ex my who i have three babies with you know what i mean when i was 18 years old a gay man changed my life by showing me how poetry could redefine my world um and you go through history uh so many famous people have been gay and lesbian uh, transgendered and bi. Uh, they've been making contributions to our, to humankind since the beginning of time. Um, and it's, uh, we need to get past the idea of who you love and celebrate the idea that you love somebody. Because there's too many damn lonely people in this world. And if you've got somebody to love and you have somebody that loves you, that's what freaking matters, man.